Hey guys, welcome to our channel, please click the subscribe button, and click the bell icon, and never miss another update from Almighty Java. In this video, we will see, how do microservices communicate with each other, with the help of REST template. As you can see three microservices are running, but now all three are the independent. Let's open one by one all three. See all three are printing same message and the message is in plain text format. So very first thing is response format should be JSON or XML. First, let's change the plain text output to JSON. Open application class of all microservice. Now instead of returning directly string, let's create JSON object and return JSON. Put this hello world string with message key in JSON. Now return this JSON object. Apply the same kind of changes in the other two application class. And just to make it simple, append a number with hello world so, we can easily differentiate. Whatever we did, it was very simple. See now it's returning JSON response. But still, all three are independent. Let's say when 8001 calls then along with 8001 response include 8002 response as well. See scenario is very simple, don't judge too early. Here I am just going to demo microservice communication feature in the simplest way. In 8001 application class, we need to create REST template beam. been created, but to use that need to create a variable for a REST template and annotate with auto wired. So with the help of REST template, we can invoke any REST service. Now the same kind of behavior we want with 8002 also, means when 8002 calls include 8003 response also, come back to 8001 home method. 8002 response we will put with a key called message2. REST template have a method called exchange, which accepts multiple parameters like URL, method type, request, expected response. The first parameter is request entity which is nothing but the URL. The second parameter is method type which is get. The third parameter is request, this we pass something when we call post or put method but here let's pass null. The fourth parameter is expected output so here it will return in string format. Now need to add get body also. That's it, see it's very simple, this is just a prototype nothing much. Coming videos we will see don't worry, now hit 8001. See it is including 8002 response as well. So now 8001 is dependent on 8002. Only thing is here in response it's appending slash as well. Let's see how to remove those. It's very simple. Create a JSON object and pass this as a parameter. So now it will not include the slash in response. Now add similar changes for 8002 as well. So here we will invoke 8003. Change message 2 to 3 and 8002 to 8003. So now 8002 is dependent on 8003 and 8001 is dependent on 8002. We created a dependency between microservices in the simplest way. Again this is just for demo purpose. So you can easily correlate how do microservices communicate. Let's hit all the microservices URL. See the output is showing. I hope you can understand. So now all three microservices are up and running, and giving some output and all are interdependent. Let's review our changes.
Now let's say stop the server for 8003. Server stopped. Now what output should be expected from 8001 and 8002? Let's check. See from Eureka server, 8003 automatically removed. And 8003 is now giving a message like unable to connect, but as we knew that 8002 is dependent on 8003, so let's open 8002, see it's throwing exception as connection refused. Now check for 8001, see it's also throwing exception like connection refused. So here is the scenario, when so many microservices are running on the cloud, and most of them are interdependent, and if in the case during some development or testing process, we stop the server then, it should not affect other even when there is a dependency. So how to achieve this? So here is third-party services like Netflix Eureka so with the help of them we can prevent such scenario. Third-party services like Hystrix and Fane clients, which we will see in the coming video. I checked in my changes which you can find in our GitHub page, I will show you where are the changes. See under Spring Boot Microservices Eureka Repository. See here are the changes. That's it for this video. Please like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.